everyone, I'm Jean Hansen. Welcome to our 100th episode of CleaningBiz.TV. As you can see, I've asked Steve to join me today. <laughs> and we are celebrating another milestone in our business. If you have been following us on the janitorial store for the past few months, you've been seeing that we've been talking about our 10 year anniversary. And the first week of October, is marks our 10 year anniversary. That's when we That's right. launched the janitorial store. So we are really excited that this kind of coincides with that celebration. And we are really thankful to all of you who have been following our videos, sure. been who have been members and subscribed to our newsletters. We really appreciate um, you following us and we just want to be able to help you as much as we can. So we actually created an infographic for our 10 year celebration so you can go online and see that and I'll link to it below the video here. But here's just a couple things, um, statistics from our infographic. We've helped over 8,300 members. Our members come from over 70 countries around the world. Wow. And we've had, we have over 35,000 newsletter subscribers and social a media connections. So we are connected to a lot of you. And again, we're very grateful. So we've seen a lot of changes over the last 10 years since launching the janitorial store. So we kind of want to hit on some of the main things that we've seen change over the years and what it means for us going forward. So. The very first topic that I want to talk about is marketing. So, you know, when we started our first cleaning company back in the 80s, how did you market that business? Oh, that was a lot of just cold calling, walking door to door and knocking on doors. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was, he did a lot of knocking on doors and um, the other thing was referrals. We really yeah. built our business a lot on referrals. That's almost all we did. Then we started our second company in 2002 and moved across the country. And what did you do there to build that? Well, there I had to uh, actually get involved with some networking groups mm -hmm. because we moved to a city that we knew nobody, nobody knew us. So I had to start building relationships somehow. Right. Yeah. So second one was all about networking. So we really focused on like one thing for each of these companies mm -hmm. and we were able to build our company based on that. It's totally different today. So 10 years ago when we launched the janitorial store, I wrote an article called 10 reasons you need a website for your cleaning company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, it, it, back then we were just trying to get companies to have a website. Now it's all about having a total online presence. So I truly believe that you cannot start or grow your cleaning company anymore by one thing alone, one method That's alone. True. You can't just do cold calling. You can't just rely on referrals. You can't just rely on a website that sits there and does nothing. You have to do a combination of all these things. Create that web presence. And for those of you who are naysayers about social media and having a web presence, the thing is that people are going online and they are researching the, the businesses that they want to do business with. And mm -hmm. so you have to have that presence because you want them to be able to find you. Okay. That's so true. You know, they're going to know more about you than uh, than you think yeah. when they meet with you face to face. Yeah, exactly. So that's why, like, as you say, you know, you better have a good website that has a lot of good information on there about your business and what differentiates you from everybody else. Uh, because that will be probably the first place to go and the first thing uh, that they're going to decide on who they're going to do business with. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to, from marketing to bidding and estimating. So this is a topic that it, we talk to our members about all the time is how to come up with pricing for the proposals that they're doing. So Steve, what's changed in the past 10 years? Well, I tell you, you know, uh, nowadays, you know, you're seeing people use a lot of tools and apps and uh, software for, for their workloading, you know, to uh, determine a price point. Um, you know, and actually it was the same thing, you know, 10 years ago too. You know, you still were workloading and determining how long it took you to do a specific job or to clean an account. But now you have uh, software that does all that for you, mm -hmm. you know, and that's all great and good, you know, but, uh, you know, everybody's heard me always talk about know your own numbers. And, uh, you know, I, I got to add that to this too, because, you know, the software and stuff is, is great to have, but... Uh, there again, you know, they're using industry numbers for the most part or their own numbers. You're best to use your own numbers as when it comes to workloading uh, because when you arrive at that price point, um, that's going to help you determine your, your profit. And actually, that's all we really care about as business owners of our cleaning companies is how much profit can we make. Right. And if we're using somebody else's numbers, well, we've got false numbers then. Exactly. Uh, but that's the biggest thing that you've seen is that the use of uh, apps and software for bidding and estimating. Well, and one of the things about this, the apps and software, and it's really great to use these tools because 
our, our customers are demanding more and they want it for less. Mm -hmm. So you have to be super productive. You have to be very accurate with your pricing. And these tools are really helpful to be, you know, to enable you to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you hit a good point. You know, that's it. You know, the customers are asking for more for less and you do, you have to come up with systems to make yourself more efficient. Uh, let it be using a piece of equipment or a training system that you that you actually implemented. Uh, you know, very good point. You know, the, the other thing is that now we're using the word bid a lot. And we know a friend of ours that's probably <laughs> cringing right now because we're using that word so much rather than proposals. And, uh, you know, because we always go back to, you know, uh, can we get a bid? Can we get a bid? And, you know, we always feel, as our friend does, that, uh, you know, bidding is a commodity. And... Uh, it's exactly that, you know, uh, all you're interested in price, and I can write that on a nap, give it and hand it to you. Uh, where a proposal is actually customized for each account that we have and for each client. Uh, so big, big difference. Yeah, so you really want to personalize your proposals and make sure it's just for that particular prospect. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so moving on to our next section that we talk a lot about with our members, and that is employees. So, you know, this has always been an issue with cleaning companies. We've been, we're known for high turnover. Yep. You know, that number 300% has been thrown around a lot. Now, there's an additional problem that we have. I mean, years ago, we still had turnover problems, but we could get people in the door applying. Mm -hmm. And so now the problem seems to be that it's hard to even get people in the door to apply for a job anymore. That's true. Anymore. That's what we hear with all of our members throughout the throughout the United States, uh, you know, that they're having a hard time getting applicants just to show up to fill out an application, you know, yep. or to show up to the interview. Right. Um, you know, and their big uh, the issue is that they're competing with other employers. You know, let it be a, uh, a shipping and receiving uh, company or, you know, a new tech company that just moved to town. And that's what they're competing with, you know, ones that are offering, you know, $15, $20 per hour and benefits you know, how can you afford to even offer that to your, right. to your employees or right. applicants? Yeah, exactly. So there's some things you can do, though. You know, it's not always about the money. Right. I mean, what from talking with the companies that are successfully growing their businesses with their employees, they're, they've made a change in their culture. Before, it yeah. used to be just, this is a cleaning company, hire people to do the cleaning, and, and off we go. Now it's really about attracting the people that you want to work for your company. So in my opinion, and in the opinion of the people that are actually being successful at this, you have to market your business to attract employees, mm -hmm. exactly how you market your business to attract clients. Okay, so you need to make sure that you've got a culture in your business that will attract people that would actually want to work for you. You want to create some buzz about your business that this is a great place to work. Here's the other thing that I believe. Now, in the cleaning industry, you want to do one of two things, and, and maybe you want to do both. If you're a larger company, I think that you need to show that you actually have a career path for your employees. Now, a career path usually means full-time employees. So if you have full-time employees, if you have supervisors, different levels of management, maybe you've got an office staff, sales, you've got different positions within your company, you have to attract the people that are looking for a career path, mm -hmm. okay? Now the second part with commercial cleaning companies, a lot of us rely on part-time help. Now that's not really something that people are going after as far as a career path, but people have goals in their life. So I think you need to position your company to attract the right part-time people to find the people that have goals. Now the goal might be to buy a toy like a boat, or the, to uh, the goal might be to send their child to college. So how, what are you doing to market your business as a place where you can help these people reach these goals? I think that's the, the shift that we need to make and then really focus on your culture to make sure that it is a place that people want to work um, for and that they want to tell their friends to say, hey, this is a great place to work or to, re, you know, to make some extra money so that you can reach that goal. That's right. So you know, maybe the first question you should ask yourself, would you work for your company? Great question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to our last thing. This is the number four big changes that we've seen over 10 years. Now, years ago, we were only calling it green cleaning. Nowadays, we're talking more about cleaning for health. We're talking more about sustainability. Mm -hmm. So, Steve, let's talk about that. Well, you know, that has come a long ways. 
you know, I remember when green clean was the buzzword, you know, and everybody was starting to jump on board with it because it uh, differentiated you from the competition. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas today that's not the case. You know, it's uh, uh, green cleaning is expected by your by your customers. You know, and uh, sustainability comes into play in so many ways. You know, and it's very very important. Uh, although you can still differentiate yourself from others, you know, being in the green cleaning movement, if you want to call it that. You know, and that's, uh, you know, uh, helping com uh, companies become SIMS uh, G GB certified and or helping your clients with their lead certification. So those are a couple of, a couple of ways that you can differentiate yourself. Yeah, so the, the companies, and this usually works with the co commercial cleaning companies who are dealing with larger buildings larger, uh, who want to become lead certified. You need to be able to help them do that. Now, some of these companies that want to be LEED certified, they will only work with companies that have the SIMS GB certification. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to differentiate yourself and be able to help these companies, then you need to take make the investment in your own company right. to become SIMS GB certified. Mm -hmm. So that is going to differentiate you because although this is growing, there's a lot more companies becoming SIM certified, um, it's still at this point really a, a differentiator. Oh, it sure is, you know, and you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. You know, you think that that number would be bigger than what it is, and um, surprisingly that that number is relatively low, you know, as far as uh, certified companies. So there's still opportunity out there. Right, so the thing is too that it, the, the entire industry has really gotten on board with this. So mm -hmm. it used to be, well, if we're green cleaning because we use green chemicals, well, now we're talking chemicals, equipment, tools, there's all kinds of things. So how does, um, you know, obviously safer chemicals is number yeah. one. But what about the tools and equipment that we use? We're also talking about being ergonomically friendly. Oh, yeah, very important, you know. Uh, because that's one of the things is if we have people using equipment that's not ergonomically friendly, meaning that uh, you know it's easy to operate, we're having fatigue, uh, operator fatigue, you know, mm -hmm. and, and injuries and things like that, which are costing us you know additional uh, monies, you know, through our workman's comp and so on and so forth. So you know that play, plays a huge part on it. You and it, it also makes sure that we're being as productive as possible. So like you right. said, if they're fatigued they're setting themselves up for injury, it's costing our company more. If they're more productive and they're not fatigued, um, they're gonna get you get more productivity yeah. out of each employee. Yeah, that's when, that's when accidents happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess the, the other thing too is that, you know, we have to think about the, the landfills. You know, that is an issue too because the landfills are getting full of, uh, you know, uh, so many of these items that aren't biodegradable and so on and so forth, you know. And that's the other part of the movement there of, of the of the green cleaning is to you know have things that are biodegradable and mm -hmm. uh, but yet also sustainable you know right and that last much longer that will last for years the days of having throwaway vacuum cleaners oh. is, are long gone we want we want to have vacuum cleaners that are going to last for years and then the other thing I wanted to talk about was some of the bigger equipment that we use the auto scrubbers and things like that um, those are um, using water and you know less chemical yeah less chemical yeah yeah and also what you're seeing is a trend is that these the the these larger auto scrubbers are actually uh, they're they're manufacturing more of these if you want to call them mini models um, that a you know a single operator can uh, can obviously run which they can now but as far as the footprint of the machine it takes up by far less space you know for storage and but yet still has the same productivity which is really cool. I've been I've been looking at some of those uh, pieces of equipment, you know, those auto scrubbers, and it's pretty exciting. And as you said, you know, some of them right now are, uh, can be run just with water with no chemical. So right, yeah, pretty All cool. All right, so there's we could talk about these things for yeah. a long time, but those are the four key areas that we've really seen a lot of change in. So let me just quickly recap what we talked about. First of all, when it comes to marketing, you know, marketing it's not free anymore. And even if social media is free and it's really cheap to get a website, you cannot compete with your competitors <laughs> by trying to market on a budget. You really need to create yeah. that total online presence. You need to do a number of different things to get your name out there and, and market your business. Profits are down in cleaning companies and that's because customers want more for less. So you really need to be more productive you need to be better at pricing and workloading the, um, your proposals yeah. and making them more personalized so you can really differentiate your company and win that um, proposal and win that client. You also need to invest in better equipment 
and technology if you want to stay competitive because your competitors are buying that new equipment and new technology. So if you're using those old vacuum cleaners that aren't ergonomically friendly right, and environmentally right. friendly, um, you're going to fall behind and you're going to be less productive and you're going to be able to make less profit. Yeah, and the other thing too that, that comes into play there is, is just like when you're doing your quality control inspections now, you know, many people and myself, we used to use uh, paper to do those, you know. Well, now you just do them on an on a, uh, on a iPad uh, or a tablet and, uh, you know, you can do all of the inspections that you want. You can email them to your client. You can email yourself a copy. You know, so things like that there really make a huge difference. Yeah. So investments in your own company in all kinds of software tools and equipment, it's really yep. going to help you move forward. And then lastly, I believe and we believe that you really need to market your business as a great place to work yep. if you really want to attract good employees and be able to retain them. So... Thanks, Steve, for joining me for this episode. Thank you. And I look forward to the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Just want to say again, thanks for everybody that, uh, that's uh, been with us uh, throughout the years. Uh, we surely appreciate it, and we look forward to the next 10 years. All right. Thanks.